I was crouching next to you with his head out, still sort of in my hands. Oh no, is this a bad ending? This is a room here. Welcome back to Change the We're here with Ewan. He is going to take us home again. And this time, when we put our hands around his waist, it's a bit awkward. I don't know how we got into this awkward situation here, but why are why is our relationship awkward now? <laughs> ready? I wrap my arms tightly around his waist. I'm ready. And we were off. Can you please take me to your goddamn bakery shop? <laughs> I still wasn't used to the cold, and honestly, it would be it would only be a few uh, be a, sorry it would only be another few weeks before I'd be completely refusing to ride on this thing with him. It was already getting to be too dang cold. I had no idea if he kept riding it all winter, but not me for sure. Though the implications of me assuming he'd continue to offer to drive me were kind of strange. I hopped off the bike with minimal stumbling and pulled him off my helmet to see you and smirking at me. I'm getting better. Stop laughing. Oh, I'm not laughing yet. We, <laughs> we both turned around to the sun, the cat hopping up onto our bench. She peered at the two of us curiously before she set to groom her paws. I shot you in a sidelong look. Not saying hi today. To, to the cat? Is it just the cat? <laughs> His eyes went slightly wide. How did you... I just shrugged. I may not be a math genius, but I can still put two, to two and two together. Do you guys follow around every new fae that shows up at the school or is it just me? They're aren't usually a new fae that show up. You're the first. Whose idea was it to keep an eye on me? Well, hey, I think you're misunderstanding. We never meant to, to stalk you or anything. Brenna just said she thought you were in danger, that's all. I have no idea what she's been up to, but I've just been keeping an eye out at school because I... He looked around helplessly. I mean, I know what it's like to be in your shoes. You have absolutely no idea what it's like to be in my shoes. No, I'm funny again. He opened his mouth to respond, but snapped it shut looking away. I spoke slightly. I mean, there's no way my shoes would fit you. Look at those feet. They're huge, like boat sized. You couldn't get them in my shoes if you tried. Okay, thank God. Thank God this was not turning into an argument. You just, it's true. The smile was still playing on his lips when he gave me an earnest, slightly worried look. You aren't mad then. I lean against this bike. How can I be mad? I mean, it's weird feeling like people are watching me or following me around. But Brenna's helped me out several times already. That thing where you go out at night. Yeah, I figured you knew about that by now. You've helped me out a few times too. I mean, that morning with Spencer and everything. Look, I'm not mad, but just like today, why stay at a distance and watch me without saying anything? It feels weird. Just come to talk come talk to me about it. I'd feel a lot less weird about it if you guys weren't just being so secretive. If you're worried about me, tell me. If you know what's going on, tell me. If I'm really one of you, stop treating me like an outsider. I didn't intend to make you feel that way. I just didn't want you to feel like this all was going to have some sort of inevitable bad end for you. You're not like me. Your situation isn't going to end up like mine. I didn't know how to respond to that. It wasn't like his situation was the end of the world. But how could I say that without trivializing what he went through? Oh god, it's mom. <laughs> mom, this is not my boyfriend, but I do wish she was my boyfriend. And that was when my charming mother made her entrance. The front door opened and she stepped out to the porch, waving happily. Oh lord, I didn't realize she was home. Michiko, mom. <laughs> yes, I'm here. Yuan, I'm telling you this as a friend. You should definitely run. What? I... Mom came toward us with a smile that most certainly meant trouble. Oh shit. There was something in my eyeball. <laughs> Who is this? That nice boy that keeps giving you a ride? Nice boy. <laughs> well, the nice, is, nice part is still up for debate. <laughs> He's blushing. But he has given me a ride a few times. Chico, honestly. What? You can see how much leather he's wearing. It definitely casts a dubious light on his niceness level. She rolled her eyes at me and held out a hand to Ewan. Anyone who could put up with this bratty child definitely must be nice. Ewan was snickering softly. Anyway, he was just leaving. So soon, why didn't come in and have a snack? I love meeting Michiko and Spencer's friends. He's not friends with Spencer. Mom, a snack. We're not in elementary school. Ewan was giving me a sort of amused smile that I was desperately trying to ignore. Then come in for our cup of hot chocolate. I'm sure it's cold on that motorcycle of yours. Look, your hands are completely fr freezing. Why don't you come inside and warm up a little before driving home? Mom? No! Stop! He doesn't want to come inside. 
How do you know? He hasn't answered yet. She gave me a completely innocent smile that I wasn't buying for a minute. I know what you're doing. Just stop. I'd love to, but I really have to... Nonsense! It's just for a few minutes. Just long enough to warm you up a little. She took his arm and started pulling him toward the house. Oh no. She captured him. Uh, you shot me a helpless look as she pushed him toward the front door. Uh, I would love it if he stayed though, because I love him. <laughs> Tell me he should stay. I just left awkwardly watching my mom drag you in, who was twice her size, into the house with absolutely no trouble. I was a little worried about what might happen, but what could we do at this point? Michiko, you should stay. I gave him a teasing grin as I caught up. Not that there's any escape for you now or anything. Mom didn't pay any attention to that. She shooed you and up the porch and into the foyer. Mom left you and I in the entry as she went to put the kettle on. As soon as she was gone, I shot you in a slightly amused look. Now's your chance to escape. If you run, she probably won't be able to catch you before you make it to your bike. This isn't funny, you know. He lowered his voice. What if something happens? Oh, I totally forgot. <laughs> I realized for the first time just how nervous he actually was. Without thinking, I slipped my hand into into his and gave it a squeeze. Whoa, what am I doing? Whoa. Whoa, wouldn't that just make his head fall off even more? Because that's... <laughs> I don't know. His palm was clammy and damp. Then we'll deal with it. There's no reason to leave just because you're worried about that. It'll be fine. He didn't look like he believed me at all. I don't believe myself either. But I just didn't want him to have to leave because he was worried about something happening. It sounded to me like he isolated himself way too much because of that already. I kept a tight grip on his hand and I pulled him to the kitchen. And after a moment, he finally tightened his grip on mine as he followed. Oh, just have a seat. I already put the water on. You and I shared a look as we both sat at the island. The water? Mom. Hot chocolate and water? Mom. Milk. Mom. <laughs> so you, do you live here in the Raven's Glade? I do. What do your parents do? My parents operate a bakery in town. Really? A bakery? How cute. Do you ever help out there? I help out on the afternoons or weekends, sometimes during the week if they're really short staffed. How responsible. I should stop by sometime. Is that that little bakery done on the square then? Mom, no. Please don't go harass you and his family. I don't want to harass them. I just want to go say hi. Then don't go say hi. It's never a good thing when parents get together. I'm in agreement there. Oh, you kids always act like everything is so dire when your parents are involved. She slid two mugs of hot chocolate toward us and leaned on the counter, smelling at Yuen from over the sink. So, what do you like to do in your free time, Yuen? Are you saying you don't just drive that bike around looking cool all the time? Oh god, mom. I don't do much. I work on my bike. What if some- what if nothing's wrong with your bike? What then? Nothing in particular. Really? No hobbies at all? Not anymore. I glanced his way, frowning slightly at the catcher in his voice. Mom, you and in the same club as Allie and me. I wanted to try to rescue him from her interrogation. Somehow the mood had dropped a little, as it usually seems to when someone touched on something that might have to do with his unique ability in current situation. Oh, have you always been interested in the paranormal? Yuan looked up sharply. No, not really. I don't like it all at all that much at all. Wait, what? I don't like it at all that all that much at all, actually. Then why are you in the Paranormal Mysteries Club? He looked away awkwardly, fidgeting with his cup of hot chocolate. I didn't have anything else to do anymore. I used to be in a drama club, but I had to stop. Well, I had worked that much out, but I guess I, I could guess why you stopped. Why did you have to stop? Mom, enough! Come on, this is an interrogation. Sorry, honey, I was just curious. Why don't I get you something to have with your hot with your chocolate? I think we have some muffins. She turned away and I cast a sidelong look at look you in sway. I knew that was a sensitive topic. And she just barreled in like that. Not that it was her fault, but yeah. Yu was staring down into his mug. That look on his face was was so desolate. He looked so soft. I could only imagine how it must have felt to give up something he loved because of all this stuff. I can't imagine you in acting though. That would be badass. But <laughs> he doesn't do it anymore. It was clearly something he wasn't over, and who could blame him, really? Yuan's head dropped forward slightly, and I nudged him worriedly. You okay? I was whispering while Mon's back was up to us. Yuan didn't respond. I knew that his ability sort of went a bit weird in the afternoon, and also when he was upset. Yuan? His head slipped forward a little more, and he abruptly jumped up and staggered awkwardly out of the kitchen. Mom turned around curiously. It's 
everything okay? I wasn't sure what to do. If I went after him or made a big deal of it, Mom might fall and see something she shouldn't. Maybe I should just distract her. I think he's fine. Maybe it was just a call or something. There was a heavy thump from the foyer. I jumped up and headed that way. I'll check on him. Oh god, I'm not used to this at all. I ran to the floor to find Yoon sprawled on the floor with his head kind of not attached. Greenish smoke was oozing out. Oh, I heard Tim in front of her a moment before awkwardly picking up Yoon's head. Feeling a little faint. I swallowed hard and tried to focus as I made some attempt to un to uh, reattach. I didn't know if he was even conscious anymore. His eyes were closed. This is so weird. And she goes everything. I froze. Mom froze. I was crouching next to you with his head out, still sort of in my hand. Oh no, is this a bad ending? Oh. <laughs> this is a crazy one. Um, I heard that, that uh, you had a bunch of bad endings. Is this one of them? And that was all she said before her eyes rolled back and she hit the floor. Well, I guess I had to forget the whole my hands were full thing now. At any rate, I had to try to get this situated before she woke up. And then I'd figure out how to deal with her having seen that. I just sort of set Ewan's head down, uh, close to his neck. Not uh, something I ever thought I'd have to do for anyone. I actually never saw the bad end screen, so I'm gonna continue on until I actually see it. Then I went and checked on my on my mom. Fortunately, she hadn't hit anything on the way down. I rode her over and kind of awkwardly flapped my hands to try to figure out exactly what to do about this. Behind me, there was a wrestling, and I really hoped that was Ewan uh, getting himself back together. Literally. Ugh. I hazarded a glance back. The head up. Uh, wasn't quite back in place just yet. Okay, that's weird. I quickly turned back around feeling a little bit like seeing him with his head off was somehow the equivalent of catching him with his pants down. It was just weird. Everything okay back there? Just give me a minute. His voice was a little slurred and hoarse. It also had a strange echoey quality to it. I wasn't sure how his voice even worked still considering... I mean, which part had his vocal cords anyway? Weird thoughts. Really weird thoughts. Mom stirred and let out a soft moan. I panicked, I turned to Ewan and kind of shoot him into the nearby powder room. He vanished in that direction as mom came to and I helped her up. Chica, what on earth? Oh, I saw... Ewan fell. He was a dizzy and he fell. Then he walked in and passed out too. I think something's wrong with the hot chocolate. Is it expired maybe? Because that's a believable excuse. I thought I saw... I smiled at her disarmingly. She looked around the foyer, confused. Yoon is in the bathroom collecting himself. I think he might be throwing up. Oh dear. She got to her feet carefully with my help. Is he alright? I think he will be. She seemed to have bought that. I should probably throw the hot chocolate out then. Did you drink any? No, I didn't have any yet. Well, oh. it was pretty amazing how people were able to rationalize the irrational as long as you give them a little seed of truth. Mom disappeared back into the kitchen. I peered into the family room where Yoon was waiting. Wait, is this not a bad ending? Where's it? What's happening? I quickly motioned him out the front door. It looked like his head was back in place now. Are you going to be okay? I think so. I'm sorry for all this. I shouldn't have come in. No, that's not... I need to go. He practically ran down the driveway and soon disappeared down the street. I watched him worriedly, hoping he would be okay. I hated that something like that happened. Again. I hated that he couldn't even have hot chocolate with a friend without the stupid variability of ruining it. No wonder he's always upset. I made a mental note to check in with him tomorrow to make sure he was alright. And in the meantime, I went to go make sure my mother was alright and that she'd really accepted my weird explanation. But the last thing I needed was her freaking out over my headless friend for the next forever. That wasn't a bad ending? <laughs> I'm confused. Chapter 5, Fairy Forest Bakery? Bitch, are you finally going to the bakery? Cause, hype. Hype. Oh shoot, what the fuck? Why am I out here? What? How? Did I not sprinkle the shit down? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, this is where I'm actually going to save for today. I have no idea uh, what raw I'm currently on at this point because I really thought I hit the bad ending, but apparently not. Apparently that's supposed to happen, or maybe it's one of the scenes that you can encounter. Anyway, thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful, and I'll see you guys in the next one.